Hey everyone, before we get into uh, the normal bar talk shenanigans, I just want to thank uh, today's sponsor, and today's episode is brought to you by WAC, the new way of tracking your hours and earnings as well as organizing life around an hourly paid job. Founded by two ex-bartenders from the UK, they know the challenges of working in the hospitality industry. WAC was created for those paid by the hour, typically working unpredictable shift patterns. They want to swap pay slip guessing, endless shift notes, and payday panic with a feeling of financial security. And now, since we have a lot of friends in the industry, we've been kind of like, you know, hanging out in Plymouth and and showing off the uh, app to some friends. And uh, so just for a little bit of feedback, I brought in my good friend, Jack, who's a bar manager in downtown Plymouth. And here's what she has to say about the app. I've used it, and it's so good. It's got everything. With WAC, I can track my hours and pay down to the second, including any rate changes and tips. I can easily view work schedules, see a live pay slip estimate, and I can store my important work-related documents. I can also see an overview of my bills and spending money between paydays. Oh, and did I mention that WAC is completely free? So check out the thousands of reviews they have on Google Play and the App Store, and you can download WAC. That's W-A-C today by checking out the link in this episode's description. Starting strong. Yeah, you know. Keep it. It's been a while. Jordan's making him nervous. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the Bar Talk (laughs) Podcast. I am Andy of Inebriar, and today I am joined by Carl Heine of Tolson's Tavern Tavern and and New World Tavern. Hello, everybody. Thanks for letting us record at the New World Tavern today. Thanks, Carl. Carl. Yeah, or um, anytime? On a Monday. Yeah, Yeah, it was like a question. (laughs) Carl's not talking to me today. I'm Carl yeah. Heine. Uh, then we have uh, Dan Mahoney of uh, Stats in South Boston. What up? Then we have Mike Zappolo. You got it. Got wow. I'm proud of you. That's a tough one. Uh, Strong start. Uh, Wagon. Wouldn't be the first time. How are we doing? And our very special guest today, <laughs> Jordan Chabot of Speedball Attack. Hi guys, thanks for having me. <laughs> is it, it Stellwagen Brewery retired. or Stellwagen Beer? Stellwagen Beer Company. Just for reference, yeah. Andy, you might want to ask these questions before we start. It's, I always get that mixed up. He was just excited he pronounced different. someone's name right. Beer company, yeah, it really was kind of on a high. Like, that's what, he has his written on his shirt for that. Yeah, and, like, you had to wear Mike's Carlsberg. And Mike's so. over thinking on, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Call me whatever. <laughs> that's it. That's what all. Looking at me? <laughs> it looked like you were about no, to say something. No, I was. I was Dead air. I, I was so excited about getting the name right, and then Carla, like, ruined it. Like, well, because you got his name right. I know. I was very happy for that. Can't wait for questions. Yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, since we have a craft beer professional on, I figure we'll talk about uh, styles of beer. Um, it is the I- IPA. I mean, I suppose that's a big question. Is the IPA marketing market dying down? Is it changing? What, what, what's the deal, Mike? Well, I mean... So it's something, you know, I've been kind of interested in lately because, like, I've, you know, I've been doing this for, I mean, at least drinking for um, craft beer since I was in college, right? And back then it was all, you know, really exciting when you got something that was like an old school IPA or whatever. And then people started getting into, you know, hazies and whatever. And that's obviously an industry driver. Um, I think it's kind of twofold. I feel like um, craft beer people are moving past IPAs, but the general public are still in the world of, you know, two or three years ago where it's it's all hazies especially people that like i mean you get less of the you guys probably get this question i mean what do you have on tap uh i don't like ipas and then you give them an ipa a hazy ipa it's like oh i like this it's like congratulations yeah like right because the first <laughs> soft IPA, the first ipa they ever had was probably the hoppiest ipa yes. that they had stone 100th anniversary something yeah rather, you know, yeah. Like palette wrecker or yeah. 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 and then they they Whatever it is, they think every IPA is the same. Or it's, it's the concept of, like, I don't like hoppy beer. It's like, well, if, if 
you like beer, you, you, you probably like hops a little bit at least, you know, so it's just about finding the right balance with them. I mean, personally, you know, I'll still drink IPAs. I'm, I'm a lot more picky about it, but um, right now, I mean, shoot, I'd rather go for like a lager. Like we had like, you know, four lagers on like a month or two ago. I was in heaven, you know what I mean? Now we have, moving into the fall, a little bit heavier beers. I think there's like like eight separate New Englands on, plus a session of pale ale, uh, a West Coast IPA and stuff. It's just, it's half our menu, you know? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's what sells, you know? Yep. Yeah, I think, I think people still are looking, but I, I agree with you. I think people that drink IPAs will always drink IPAs. Yep. Uh, you almost have that now where if you were a Bud Light drinker, you're always going to drink Bud Light. Now you're an IPA drinker. You'll drink any uh, IPA, but you'll only drink the IPAs. Uh, but yeah, we've been having a lot of luck with lagers too. I had an experience at a. Uh, I was at a place the other night, and uh, I heard somebody that had ordered our beer, and um, it was just a very simple pale lager. And I'm like, that that's beer flavored beer. Like if you like beer, you're you're at least going to be able to enjoy a pale lager. But what I find when people order something like that usually when they say oh i don't really like this it's because you were looking for something hazy you you saw you know the stell wagon name on it, or even other breweries that do like hazy stuff and they order a beer that tends to be you know just like a light beer flavored beer lager um and they're expecting hazy and they don't like it because of that and that's why lagers rate low i'm like untapped and stuff i mean right. i'm guilty of this like five or six years ago before i got really into the game or whatever you know i'd, I'd, I'd put a pilsner you know in my infancy in the uh, in the game was like uh, you get pills and I'd be like oh this isn't hazy enough well it's not supposed to be yeah right you know right I mean? true to style on right. the rating so you know remember those blogs on Beer Advocate back in the day where like the people that were really into Beer Advocate which if, if anybody listening doesn't know because I feel like Beer Advocate is sort of I don't know maybe I'm maybe I'm out of touch but just isn't what it was back when the crap beer boom kind of went off like yeah, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, do you still check it all the time? Like, No. I don't. But. I, I don't drink anymore, so, and I haven't had beer in like three or four years. I've been mean, drinking non-alcoholic stuff now, but, um, yeah, it was, uh, back in the day, that was the big thing. If you went on Beer Advocate and rated a beer, you'd be like, well, did you rate it true to style? It says on your profile, your favorite beer is stout. Why are you rating an IPA? And, it's, it's that same thing. you got to know what you're drinking. Right. And also reading the reviews on the other end, you also got to be like, okay, well, if a lager breaks 3.5, 3.75, that's a good lager on your hands. But it's never going to rate. I mean, I can't even think of, I, I can't think of many lagers that rate like above like four on like an untapped. And right. I think that's unfair because a lot Absolutely. of people will, um, I mean, some of the cleanest, nicest, tastiest beers that I've ever had are lagers. And I'll look at their rating and it's like, Oh, it's a it's a two six. Like what what's going on here? But it's just you know people rated for what they want, not knowing that what they wanted was something else. If that makes sense, you know yeah. what I mean? Right. I was, right. I was finding like those the, people suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ordering a cheese steak and then getting mad because it doesn't have pastrami. Well, that's a, a question at the brewery. Do you have this? Somebody will get a beer and say, "I don't like this," and expect not to pay for it. I mean. At the end of the day, I mean, 16 ounces isn't going to break us. I mean, if somebody really right, just but how often does like, that happen? Um, I mean, most people are troopers. I yeah. feel like. I mean, I you know I worked behind the bar a long time before I uh, you know started you know, running the tap room, and honestly, it's just it's not worth getting into a fuss about it. No. I mean, so if somebody really wants to make a fuss about it, they're going to get their beer, and they're either going to you know make a big stink and make you or them look like a dick, or am I going to get bleed for that? No, no. you can no. say dick. Okay. Yeah. You can't or, say, just wait till I get going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, you know, you can just give it a, you know, give them a different beer, be on their way, and maybe they'll, like, that experience of getting something that they want, that's going to, you know, positively affect their uh, mind, mind about the place for next time. You know what I mean? So Right. It's funny. I was just doing, uh, right before I came here, which is why I was late, I was on on tap. Uh, there we go. Uh, always got reasons, right? Beer menu, but it was good because it's relevant content, guys. Mm -hmm. So I was printing my beer menu, which is usually like a 50 to 50 ratio IPAs and then everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's pumpkin season, so there's going to be a skew there. Um, kind of, it's turned, pumpkin season's almost cider season now, too. I feel like you got to put a couple extra of those on here and there, too. But my beer menu for the first time is sort of an even ratio. We have, like, I think six different sections on the menu separating the styles. And there's, I think, six IPAs on, four wheats, which include sours five or six lagers and believe it or not like the stout brown ale pumpkin ale sort of category we loop together our seasonal is probably like seven right now out of the 24 lines we have and uh it's first time it's been like that for a long time but that's just sort of like the natural progression it's what's available from the breweries i get 
they seem to be producing more styles outside of the IPA too, so you can shop a little bit more, and it's what the consumer is drinking. They're, IPAs are moving still, but they're not going to be upset if there isn't 12 different ones they can choose from on my menu at all times. And the problem you have with having so many IPAs on is everybody wants the hazy ones, and you carry seven hazies, and all of a sudden you get seven hazies that are selling evenly, and you're waiting for it to kick, waiting for it to right. kick. Yeah, they just so, cannibalize yep. each other. Yeah, you cannibalize yep. each other. It's uh, it's been a really interesting year because like all summer long, normally at the beer cellar, we shrink down the darker beers and expand like the uh, the not hoppy stuff, the pilsners and, and and whatnot. But all summer long, people were buying dark beer, like yep. at the same rate as they always. No kidding. Which is wild. It was hot as fuck this summer. Yeah, too. easy hot. Yeah. You know, it, you know, Tatum kept ordering more and never shrunk that section down, and it was very strange. That is weird. Yeah. I mean, I maybe. I don't know. I kind of get that because, like, when I buy sours, I buy them in the winter and age them a little bit till the summer. And if I buy stout, I don't. I don't go out beer shopping as much because I have more than I know what to do with, and I'll just go in the fridge and grab a high life, anyways. Yeah. Um, but you know, if if you want something that's going to be you know a little bit more conditioned or whatever, you believe in that, anyways. I know. I know a lot of places just put out beer when they think it's ready to be drunk. You know what I mean? Um, but. I get that. Like, I'll stock up, like, you know, I'll surprise myself six months later. It's like, oh, I f- forgot that I had this, I don't know, barrel aged 1050 or something like that. You know, it's it's a good beer, not for the summer, but it's a great one in the winter. And you forget that you had it, you pull it out of the box or you're the back of your fridge. Oh, this is going to be great tonight, you know? Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a good that idea. I know, too. Yeah. 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 Oh, the cellaring and all yeah, that? Yeah. That used cellaring. to be huge you seven years a, ago, eight years ago. Here at New World. Yeah, we used to do it a lot. Places that had we that. do it. We still got a, a few bottles tucked away, but. You have like Oak Age Arrogant Bastard that was oh, like yeah. 10 years ago, yeah, and we Belgian have, beers that you couldn't yep. get. And we had a lot of huge. the uh, Christmas beers from, uh, who was it, had all the Anchor. Uh, seven beers of Christmas. Uh, oh, uh, uh, brewery. Uh, the brewery. brewery yep. yeah. uh, we got a lot of that. Man, taking me back. Jesus, we should break <laughs> one out right now if I knew we were talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to watch out for some of those stouts, you know, anything over... Yeah, they sneak. Yeah. And then the older they are, too, I mean, the smoother they are. that 10 was that 10%? It's got to be up there. And they put in that big oil can. Yeah. Oh, God, those are good, though. <laughs> See, as far, double, as, far as, like, a can. shelf, yeah, I mean, that was that just But you know what I find color. myself doing, too, is I think when I go out to drink, especially during the winter and the fall, if there is a funky stout, no matter what it is, a marshmallow stout or a pumpkin stout, I find myself gravitating towards, you know, the one-offs, the different ones, because I want to taste them. But when I'm drinking the IPAs, uh, I, I I stay away from the funkier ones. And there's, there's a lot of funky IPAs. ones out there. Yeah, it just yeah. It's, it to me it doesn't translate. Yep. You know, an IPA with coconut and passion fruit and it's all a, that. It just it's not my style. But if you put coconut and passion fruit and you're like, oh, I put this in a stout, I'd be hey, this yeah, I right. never had this before. It's, it's great. A, it depends right. if a place does flights. Honestly, there's like flight beers and like weird IPAs. I'm like, well, I know I don't want a pint of this, but I'd be really, really remiss if I didn't try this, like, you know, exactly, crazy yeah. adjunct IPA that I would probably never buy cans of. But if I see it, it's like, that's got to taste pretty weird. I got to try it. You yeah. Know? Yep. I'm the same way. That's like a habanero IPA or something. I'm like, exactly. I don't, don't yeah, want to freaking yeah. four pack of that. I don't regret my yeah. life for that long. I remember but a little those sample. Day, those two, those Sculpin. Yeah. Those yep. very yeah. spicy, spicy. Well, they, there's still that kind of push to separate yourself from the pack and it leads to some, like, weird beers. I, I remember... This one day someone was like, what is a California surf lager? And I'm like, fuck if I know. Like, it sounds made up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's a great up. question for Mike. What do you, I mean, there's, years ago when I started drinking, there was like Anheuser-Busch, mm-hmm. Coors, and that was it. Um, what do you do now that there's so many local breweries? Um, what, what do you do to set yourself apart? Or do you worry about it because you have, you know, that local people well, coming in personally for me i mean you know i do more in-house stuff than production so i guess my job is to kind of just pack it with things that would bring people in other than the beer like inebriart events like inebriart <laughs> events which we have three of coming up shameless promotion including a comedy show next yeah, week yeah, don't we right. yeah. Yeah. yeah jay whitaker come see it but anyways um <laughs> you know i mean everybody you can't swing a cat without hitting a good beer these days every single brewery has at least something that's going to make the money that's why they're still around you know maybe they don't hit on ipas all the time maybe they don't hit on stouts all the time but i bet you if they don't hit on one of those they got a killer esb they got a killer lager they got they got something going on for them that people when they think of that brewery it's like oh that's the one that's the bread and butter there that's why we go here so i tend to worry less about 
I think, I mean, you know, you guys can say what you want. I think my beer quality is, like, good enough to get by. I think it's pretty good, you know. But what I try to do to separate from the rest, I mean, is to try and create more stuff to bring people in to drink. Because, like, one of the biggest problems that I have, um, zero visibility at my place. We're off of 139. You wouldn't even know we're there. And say, oh, we're still I guess, oh, You know where the Ming Dynasty is? Oh, that place. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's had a night at the Ming, you know, down the road from there. So, um what I get a lot still four years into the game is like, I didn't even know you guys were here. So that's why I'm doing stuff like, like an yard stuff. It, it brings people in. I've had a lot of like weekday classes, I don't know, cookie decorating, craft classes, things like that, that, you know, their promotion brings people there. And then I'll see them again in three weeks. Like, Oh, I was here for the thing last week. You know? So I guess for me, you know, beer will attract people and you see stuff on shelves too. And they might, they might seek you out. But for me, it's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta have, fun stuff going on like we, we tend to focus on like the backyard for us is great during the summer it's a big open space um fire pit we got a stage we do music and stuff out there so it's um i don't know i mean you can go with like crazy stuff i mean i, I guess another one that we do and we're super guilty of it is um beer labels and puns and intellectual property and stuff like our the beer that we have that a lot of people know is um jurassic dark and it's literally just like we're just waiting for steven spielberg to sue us on this one <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just a picture of a t-rex with like a t-rex skeleton with like a beer in its hand so but, but people like that they see that that gets you know spread out on like socials and stuff there's a couple like you know non-local beer pages that pick that up that saw that's like, oh this is cool and like you know other ones that are less glamorous like one's making fun of intellectual property which is a huge thing in the craft beer world i mean you know mm-hmm. every bunch of people get you know c and d's every day from different companies that have these watchdog groups that look out for stuff but that's one way to do it too without having to worry about the flavor because can art you know if you're buying stuff off a shelf like at um you know beer, um, seller. beer seller yeah. you're not getting a sample of it but if you see something cool you think hey this has cool colors and stuff. This must taste good. And I've been burned by that many times. But <laughs> you know what? They already paid for it by then. And so did I at that point. So The tap handle game used to be the same way. It's like, yeah. what's the weirdest tap handle you can have? I'm like, oh, I'll get that fucking thing. Yeah, like, they oh, seem to be more simple nowadays. Yeah. They're well, very clean. The, the still wagon handle is very clean. We got that one on. It's probably more yeah. cost effective not to have ceramic handles that you drop <laughs> once and they smash. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Get pieces of freaking handle in your yeah. beer when you go to pour them. But I've been to breweries that don't have the best beer in the world, but have a huge following because they're they made it an event space. You know, there's always something mm-hmm. going on, or they got video games, or you know, whatever activity going on there. And it's, it's as long as the beer is good, decent, right. the best. Then yeah, you're and I think Mike's right too. Uh, sometimes the labels or the name, what you call it, yeah. is going to get people to buy it, and they don't care if the liquid's good or not. Um, I think, um, help me out with that brewery, Stacy's mom. Evil genius. Evil you genius. Bring yeah. up evil genius. Well, yeah. because uh, I was they were like the first it. ones yeah. to do <laughs> such funky yep. names that everybody kind of knew. Right. And they gravitated okay, to it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's good beer, good liquid, but people will come in here and get Stacy's mom because they heard the song. Or right. it reminds them of something. Kyle's gonna kick that keg. He plays Probably like five times a day. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Uh, but it is. It is. I think it's it's a big seller for some people. Is the funkier the names, and it's if it fun means to order purple monkey dishwasher. Correct. Purple mm-hmm. monkey dishwasher. But Simpsons reference. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. <laughs> uh, I remember that one. Like, I can even tell you like um, specific cans that I bought for the art. There was one. It had it was red and yellow label. It had uh, Vladimir Putin playing a guitar. Saw that. Was, oh, synthesizer. Was yeah, that you posted um, that or something, yeah, or maybe CBC great. did or that something? Sounds like, that sounds like. Is that yeah. Hoofhearted Brewery? That I sounds like something they would do. Fun. Yeah, Hoofhearted. Yeah. <laughs> them on. That sounds like something they would do. Yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah this was a long time ago, but uh, yeah, it's just like that shit sells all the time. People love being in on the joke too. Like the thing about I feel like breweries or good like popular local breweries is they have a personality and. You want to get people comfortable with that. They don't want to feel excluded. So if like the name of your beers are, is, are a pun, that's the easiest way to invite someone in on the joke because everyone can pretty much get a pun. So I don't know. I just feel like I'm, you get to know the brewery a little bit when you see what kind of puns they're operating with. Like Mac to the Future was great. <laughs> we had that on draft and, and it went well, but it went super well on Sundays when the Patriots were playing right. because Mac to the Future. Mac to yep. the, it was just perfect. And people who wouldn't normally drink a Stellwagen beer would usually sit there and crush a Miller Lite or a Bud Light while watching football while ordering that beer. 
not only because it was Patriots themed, but because it had a nice little pun to it. It was it was fun. Yeah, we had a little heart attack when uh, Zappy started taking over, and uh, we we're like, crap. <laughs> Zap to the future. I don't know. <laughs> Zap to the future. Are you gonna get him for uh, intellectual property? Yeah, you should sue him. Yeah. Well, Zappy, I don't know. For me, I mean, I, I got it tatted on my leg, so I mean, I think that makes it mine. Nobody else can see that. <laughs> give me a dime. Everybody, give me a dime. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like he, uh, he's got money to spare. Yeah. <laughs> he's got the best gig in a professional sports backup quarterback. Actually, he's had to play. I'd say what Hoyer's probably got the best gig. In yeah, ten million bucks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sit up in the luxury box now. For the last twenty years. Yeah. I get nerds on this show. This is terrible. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> This is sports, Andy. Sports? It's called sports. Yeah. <sighs> Shooty hoops, footy ball. Um, that is a great space over at Stell Wagon, though. Um, it, you know, I used to pretend I was Christmas shopping over in that area. I'd go to Poopsie's, get a pizza. <laughs> then I'd go over to Stell Wagon for a couple hours, hide in the corner, and then get all my shopping done in about a half an hour. Um, come home with the Stell Wagon t shirts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and all my, little, all my little nieces and nephews get Stell Wagon shirts. Huh? But, um, no, this space is good, but that's the thing. You want to get people in there for the first time so they're comfortable with it. Right. Because, and that's why doing these events, like, oh, I'm comfortable mug painting. I've just never done it here, but I've been to a mug painting before. And now you go to Cell Wagon, you're like, oh, yeah, I can chill here. You know what I mean? This well, I mean, that's like kind of um, on the, uh, you know, obviously that's that's kind of like a, a short, not, not a, I wouldn't say a short-term fix because I do want to continue doing things like that to bring people in. But, you know, um, playing field has been leveled i feel like on a lot of these breweries because everybody's doing cool stuff like that so yeah. then you got to look at what the next step is and you look at people that are you know um looking at like food restaurants things like that there's places down south that i love like uh avondale brewing company sell down easy brewing company down south i think one's actually in carolina but they went from brewery to concert venue so that's a way to go but you see places around here like um i don't know when hans is ever going to be done with it but that little <laughs> restaurant he's got going <laughs> you know the big boys trillium they're 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 giant restaurant thing they're they're kind of moving away from you know being simply um a brewing company and it's more like they're talking about dropping the name brewing company off of there and that you know i they uh i, I worked there for a couple of months as they were taking hey we're going to start branding ourselves as this because they want to be known just as much for food for produce for the little farm down there um, untold just opened up uh, their spot in Derby Street you know that's kind of like the next step with things it's like okay well we got the brewery game going what do we do now how do we turn this success into even more success and I think it's smart it's it's so smart to use the fandom that you have because I mean you know not everybody loves beer everybody loves food so they're gonna capture that market if they get good food you know you start talking about things like um, I don't know if they get a liquor license craft cocktails or if they can get a uh, brew pub license so they can actually just do a untold or, or trillium or second wind branded restaurants and sell other people's stuff too i mean it's 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 so genius to play on the name like that because you're going to capture an entirely different audience that that than that and you're not just relying on beer sales from at that point and that's you know that's the next step for everybody i feel mm -hmm. like you know yeah you say that there was a place i went down to indianapolis a few years ago to go catch a patriots game and we walk, got to walk around town a little bit and there was one of the coolest things i've ever seen it looked like a brewery from the outside, and it was named. I, I, the name's gonna slip my mind, and that sucks. But uh, it was it had a brewery name. It was something brewing, but and blah blah blah. We walked in, and it was like a market. There were different food stands that were stationary, and you felt like you were going to like an outdoor market to just like a farmers market almost. But then there were random bars placed around inside too. So there were stores. There were counter service for restaurant style. There were bars. There was. Um, some entertainment in the corner and it was you could spend hours there and feel like you weren't just sitting on a bar stool You were walking around you were yep. shopping you were eating there was coffee There was it was and it was all one business right. under that roof I think they were like subbing out some space to independent people too, but it, I had never seen anything like that. I'm like, why don't we do this up there? Well, like, look at um, Cisco in Nantucket. They have a winery distillery and it's all just almost like a little village that you walk into right. and then just have a party in the middle yeah, same it's as like, the one in New Bedford they just yeah, opened. Yep. Yeah, it's more beer. That's all beer, but same thing. It's yep. yeah, it's. And that's wild. like you go to You're Nantucket, like, like I go to the brewery today. Well, Mike, like, what do you do? What do you do when you when people come in? And I know you get it because I'm sure every other brewery gets it. Do they come into your place and say, "Oh, uh, what kind of wine do you have?" Yes. Or can I get a Tito's and soda? Uh, mm. Yes, we have that. Uh, the short fix for that was brewing hard seltzer, but uh, that doesn't always scratch the itch for everybody. So for me, I mean, I guess it's just a lot of um, 
training my staff up for things that like for, for, like perfect example uh, for whatever reason um Tito soda people like whale watcher which is just a session ipa it's the weirdest thing and but nine times out of ten when somebody wants a you know vodka tonic Tito soda something like that I'd be like here try this it's like really crisp you might actually like this and at first like i don't know and then they take a sip like, oh yeah i'll have that i mean Maybe it tastes like that, or maybe just because it's an inoffensive beer that's drinkable. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but for whatever reason, that's just like a. a, a, a all right, listen, you're saying all that. the right things, but what are you thinking when somebody comes up to a brewery <laughs> <laughs> and orders a Tito's and soda? I'm like, uh, I say, are you all right? <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, uh, like first time at a brewery, huh? Who, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what a brewery is? Who's responsible for you? Uh, my favorite's one. That, my favorite's when they order Bud Light. And I, I've gotten ones that are like, you know, they're they're older guys, so it's just not registered. I was like, we don't have that here. It's like, what do you mean you don't have Bud Light? I'm like, we, we, we don't. We have our own stuff. And then we, we give, them a, give them a lager or whatever. And they're like, well, I thought you said you didn't have Bud Light. Like, and I'm like, I can either like keep going with this charade. I can be like, oh, I found a keg in the back here. Enjoy this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Private stock right there. <laughs> I, I, just, I still I've heard of that multiple times. And I just, I don't. In the beginning, I could understand when breweries were new. But I feel like they're. Yeah, I. I me. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like they just do it to fucking be. No, you glasses. and I would. Yeah. True. Well, not Jordan anymore. He's we a might drink. actually do that. We should yeah. go down there and ask for Tito's and stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> is Mike in the back? Can you no. ask him that we need two Tito's and stuff? We need a vodka with vodka, please. No one takes us serious when we're serious. Can I, I, get, can I, get, I like when they ask for a Tito's and vodka. Can I get a Tito's and vodka? Tito's and vodka. Yeah. All right, lady. Fresh Time, off my. Uh, why don't you go to Speedwell for a while? <laughs> <laughs> I just did my tip certification while driving in a Plymouth. I was not I was not drinking and but learning about not drinking and driving. It, it, there's there's a joke in there somewhere. But yeah, he did it while I was on my phone the whole thing. But that's all that a, stuff's fresh in my that's head. That's a now. great story. Yeah. Yeah, so when someone orders a Tito's and vodka, that's displaying uh behavior that could be down the line they could be an issue drinking. Thank you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a helpful hint for I'll call you a Guinness for, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to ask Mike. Mike, okay. we're going to put you on the spot. Okay, put him on the spot. Okay. You, you run um, the brewery itself, the, the front of the house? Call front it. of the house. I don't know if it's yeah. the back of the house. I don't, I don't know if do, you call it front of the house. But. I don't really do production or anything like that. So. All right, so what are the stupidest things people do when they come into you? Employees or customers? Oh, God. You know what? <laughs> you might as well say customers because your employees are going to know who they are. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, when I, this is not stupid, but I, I think this should be brought up for a lot of breweries, I think, are doing this. When I came into um, Stellwagen, I want to say it was right before COVID started, there was probably, I gonna say. There was probably 15 adults and 800 kids. Yeah. Um, so. We went, yeah, we went back a few months later. And it was really quiet in there, and there was no kids. And I said, what's going on? Last time it was, you know, there was a lot of kids here. Yeah. And she said, yeah, we stopped that. After six is 21 plus. Yeah. And I said, great idea. I'm coming next week. Yeah. Because I don't want to go somewhere with the wife and the kids are running around. I'm like, to me, that's stressful because I find myself going, uh, nobody's watching that kid. And, you know, who's the parents of that kid? And Get away from these, these kid. two are at the no. bar drinking, and the kids are, who the hell is driving? Yeah. Uh, kids. Yeah, it's just for me, it's stressful when a bunch of kids are running around. Uh, but I tend, I say this almost every episode. If there were breweries around when my kids were little, I'd be the first one to bring them. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, There's no doubt in my mind. So it, it's so tough because the way breweries popped onto the scene, and I definitely saw this when I first started there because, like, you know, I was a hobbyist at that point uh, who, you know, finally got a crack behind the bar. I didn't really have any you know um restaurant experience other than working in like a kitchen at a nursing home which is totally different than you know line cooks and all that but um it's such a tough game i mean like it it, for a while it kind of crushed my favorite hobby because i just i wanted the quiet you know and it's it's tough because there are i'm sure you don't see that a lot you know here at speedball or whoever and it's um it's because there's an expectation that there's just like a social norm that 
that doesn't happen. At a, you don't let your kids run around at a restaurant. It's it's very frowned upon. And really? you don't bring You'd your kids surprised. to a bar. Yeah, we didn't get that memo. <laughs> really? <laughs> we no, I know. You, you I don't mean. know if they did. Yeah. It is more open. So than when like, yeah. when breweries started popping up everywhere, I feel like um, there wasn't a set of expectations, and then it kind of just got like. And, and I saw that. I see this everywhere. Every brewery I've ever gone to, every brewery I've ever worked, I, I you know you see it at least you know one out of two times, two out of three times. Um, there was there was really no set expectation. It was kind of the wild west. So you see people bring them in, nice open space, and they feel like they can have a beer. Just don't watch them. And you know, that's not every parent. I mean, a lot of parents are really good. They'll bring screens. We have games and stuff. If they want me to throw Shrek on the TV, I don't care. I like that movie too. <laughs> um, but you know, the thing that a lot of them don't realize is you know we're a uh, we're a mix of a bar, a restaurant, and an industrial facility. And the third one is where that really hurts. Um, because you know we're, we're semi-open. There's there's chemicals. There's heavy bags. There's barrels. Oh my God! The worst one of the worst one of the worst experiences I've had, especially since you know going back recently, was uh, I had a kid who was climbing on the barrels, and I'm, I had to go back. So, oh yeah, yeah. Can you just can you just watch him a little bit better? And uh, you know, guys like yeah, all right. Um, I go back not ten minutes later, and we have our we have our like our wild beers. Like just we use the barrels as like a barrier for like a wall in like the back room. Pulled the plug on it. No. That's a thousand dollars worth of product right there. If, if it got inoculated with the wrong stuff in the air or whatever, you know, it's um, that that could have. And I said, I, I go back. I'm in a panic and calling the owners. Like, do, do I keep this guy's card? Like, what do we do? Like, what, what do we do here? You know. So I just go and talk to guys. Like, hey, you really got to watch it. Your kid might have just ruined a thousand dollars worth of beer for us. You got to watch the kid. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. And the guy just goes, Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> All right, Father of the Year, thank you so much. So <laughs> he ends up he ends up storming out or whatever. He, he, there was a line, so he couldn't get his card, so he left his tab open. I'm like, okay, well, you know, solves the problem there. He ended up coming back. The boss didn't want to want to charge it or whatever, but that was kind of the impetus for a uh, 21 plus area yes. in the yeah. back. So now we have one on the side and one in the back, it, and it sucks because not everybody knows about it because it's kind of. You know, there's a sign for it, but you really don't know it unless you go to the bathroom back there. And then there's this nice little lounge area to get a TV. I don't even put on music back there half the time. It's just, you know, whatever sports are on, a couple couches and stuff like that. And that tends to help because, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, we're a suburban brewery. Uh, we're Marshfield's a very family-oriented town. Um, we love all our customers. We love our families and stuff. And most of the time, people are pretty good. But by cutting and like you know, my, my owner has he has he has two kids, you know, so it's unfair to do the whole, um, you know, no kids in breweries thing, you know what I mean? Because it's it's it shoot myself in the foot, you know. People go to Marshfield football games right up the street. They'll go to the soccer fields up the street with the with their kids on Saturdays, and they'll come by for a beer afterwards. And I'm more than happy to serve them. We have a nice outside area they can go run around in. I don't really care what you do out there. Just don't knock over anybody's beer and stuff. I mean, I guess a lot of it's just about like patrolling and I do feel like the culture has kind of caught up where you know f three four years ago not a care in the world about it but now I feel like a lot of parents have gotten better about um, you know like I said bringing screens keeping them distracted uh, setting up outside claiming tables that aren't in the middle of everything you right. know what I mean I'm not gonna say no to your money I'm not gonna say no to your business but the expectation is that you know if I come over to you and say could you uh Kids are getting a little bit rowdy. Uh, would you mind just you know keeping them keep a little bit better eye on them? I got I got you know I got uh, Candyland in the back. Do you want to do you want to you know play that or whatever? You know there, it's it's most most people understand, especially if you present it as a safety issue, which it is. Yeah, I that's mean, what I do too. Yeah. If people are running around and they run around here, punching um, the kid does one, not I, make I, I, a safety issue. Listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to even say it because I probably have. But um, <laughs> I went around to these. They, they were running around, just literally running around. So I went to the adults at the table. I said, hey, listen, you've got to keep your kids at the table. They're, you know, they're running around. Oh, they don't listen to me. <laughs> okay. So I went over to the kids. I said, go sit at the table. Boom. They never, kids never got up again. <laughs> but I'm like, you, you know, i got a food runner that's walking around with hot food. Right. You know, and glass and everything else. And, and these kids are running around. I'm like, well, I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't understand. Sometimes you've got to put the fear of God in the parents, too. Like, you do. I, I just, you know, they don't listen at first. I'm like, okay, look. Until you've seen a kid smack their head off the side of the table and start writhing on the ground. Yeah. Until you've seen a woman take a digger off of the uh, off of a kid cutting her off and you know, smash her flight, catch some glass, and then I, yeah. That that's a real thing. And then dad saw dad saw that, finished his beer, grabbed the kid by the arm, 
boom, gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They won't take responsibility for that stuff sometimes. It's, it used to be bad. Until you see some of the stuff that I've seen, you're not going to understand why you need to keep your kid there. I mean, right. Like there's, there's and a, that's there's, what they don't know. There's they, a vat full why of caustic. I watch my kids? They're fine. There's right. a vat full of chemicals in the back there. And right. if you don't watch them, and my bartenders aren't babysitters either. I'm, not, I'm paying them to pour beer and wipe mm -hmm. down tables. I'm not paying them to watch your kids. And they end up back there or they end up, you know, next to these 300-pound bags of grain. you got to kind of make them realize that we're not just trying to be jerks about it. Right. Like, it's because things need to go smoothly. We need to have a good experience for everybody. And there are some real hazards there. Yeah. You know that fascinates I mean? me that people are just okay with that. Like, but, you know, then you get these other families, like you said, that come in and the kids are sitting at the table yeah. and they're well-behaved. Yeah. And that's what you want. You know, it's not everybody. It's just, right. it's... I'll buy them around. It's the few. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> the lack it's of the few. awareness it's just to your surroundings. And, you know, you got kids that are running around, and, and then the other kids are like, well, I want to run around too, and now all of a sudden you got 30 of them running around. Well, right. we used to have this debate. When I first, when we first had Joel, my kid's going to be five now, but when he was like one and two years old, I used to go to like Devil's Purse, stuff like that, and Carl was anti-kids at brewery, and I was like, no, nah, it's fine, it's fine. That was before he was mobile. Now I'm like, dude, if I bring that kid to a brewery, I, they better have padded rooms. Like, I wouldn't in put, I wouldn't put that on anybody, you know what I mean? That I, I don't understand why, if you don't have control over your kid, you have a hard enough time bringing them to Target. Don't bring them to fucking yeah. a brewery, you know what I mean? If you can't get them to sit in front of a grilled cheese at Friendly's, you can't bring them to a place where there's 300 adults with beers in their hands. Right. And that's just common sense. I, I am still anti-kid at kid breweries. And I understand from the brewery's perspective, like, you can't be because if you're like, there's no kids allowed in my brewery, they go to another brewery. We caught, a, so right. we caught a bad rap for a while because during COVID, we had to ban them completely because that's taking up capacity with non-paying customers. Right. So, I mean, that was paradise for me. I mean, I, I loved my tenure. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So people complained <laughs> that they couldn't bring their kid to the brewery. Is during, that what you're saying? Yes. Well, not to mention all those hey, rules folks, were the about worst for kids, yeah. too. Like, sit down, don't be near people. Like, yeah. how do you tell your child that? Like, they don't get it. Like, Right. My thing is, and I've had this conversation with multiple people who work at breweries, I mean, there's a time and a place for everything, and your kid doesn't belong at a brewery because there's nothing there for them. And my argument is, so is it okay if me, Dan, and Carl go to Chuck E. Cheese and get shit-faced? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it they, is. They won't let us do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, they have rules now. But that was a good time. It's, it's not okay. Now you know why there's no more New World holiday well, parties. <laughs> <laughs> so take it to the next level. What about dogs? I mean, I'm not a dog person. I don't mind them, but I'm not, you know, some people are dog people. Yeah. I'm not a dog person. I'm a dog person, and I don't um, mind it. But again, it's one of those, if your dog is unruly, get them the fuck out. But it's not even that. It's that, what if I walk in to wherever we're going and there's a bunch of dogs there, all right? So I'm not a dog person. I'm not walking by that pit bull or that schnauzer, or I don't even know what a schnauzer is. But uh, it's a hot dog. I, I like the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I know that thing's not going to go... Right at my jugular. Well, we've heard about that, right? Where there was a combination of kids and dogs, and like yeah. a kid got bit at a brewery. Is that and, then, and it's not so Rhode much. Island, right? Yes. It's not so much yeah. the kids yeah. and the dogs. I remember that, it's yep. My dog and your dog, and maybe my dog don't like your dog, but yeah. right. why would you put them all together? Yep. Right. Well, the like, worst you're is. You're a dog person. Yeah, but I. a couple of schnauzers. I, they, they're not schnauzers, but I'm, I'll take one to the brewery and one won't because one tends to bark at other dogs, and I don't think that's fair to you. That you're trying to hang out and enjoy your pee and my, my dog's just fucking yapping so I'm like alright you're not coming to the brewery there you go. So Time you, out. you told that dog yeah to my, <laughs> I'm like bitch you stay home and I can say <laughs> she's a female dog so I that's what I didn't use that <laughs> <laughs> um, but no it's I mean with COVID and stuff everyone got dogs and a lot of people that shouldn't have dogs got them Very yeah. true. like and we had our giant outdoor patio we let people bring dogs on and we had an occasion where the person doesn't Give it this one to friends. Yeah. And that dog snapped at one of my waitresses. I'm like, all right, get the fuck out. Yep. Like, so it's just so like kids. Said, you get to, all yeah. right, get the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, there's a time for uh, professional illness. I mean, that's not one of them. Oh, yeah. Man, I go out to relax, right? Like, yes. It, like, why the fuck would you want to bring two things that aren't going to listen to you? You're kidding your dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, like, say, I'm 100% like with you. Drop them off at his grandparents. and then But go, again, if they had that stuff. Put them in his cage and, and, and they're talking about. the first one going, hey, go nuts, guys. I'll be at the bar. I just yeah. wonder what the uh, the effect on the babysitting market was once breweries opened up sometimes. Right. <laughs> and that's one of the things that like baffles me is I, I've seen in multiple breweries where there's like one adult and like three kids. You're like, why? Yeah. Why go to the library? Like, because Dad said, "I'll take the kids, honey," and then they go to the brewery, and he's friggin' 
having three or four beers, and then we he's going to drive the kids we home. We had that at one of our mug painting events. So there was one ticket under this guy's name, and he shows up with two daughters. And so he sets, his, so clearly one of the daughters was there to paint the mug. And he's like, would you have anything else for my, my other daughter to paint? I'm like, no. <laughs> Why would I have something else for your other daughter to paint? Like, that's not how this works. And then she was like, oh, I'm done painting. And he's like, no, no, do this, do this. And then one got another beer. It's just like, that is so fucking selfish. It drives me crazy. Yep. No kids are brewers. Dogs are fine. Ha! <laughs> I feel like dogs listen better. Certain dogs. Not every yeah. dog. Not every dog. Depends on the dog, depends on the kid. That dog, that That's kid, true. That kid in sure. Well, usually they won't. Usually they'll uh, they'll keep the dogs on a leash, so at least they're contained. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I grew up. I was a leash kid growing up at Disney World, the airport, stuff like that. Like that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, I was a little terror. I was like, they gave me like early Ritalin, man. But, uh, you know, that's kind of frowned upon nowadays. I feel like you know, and I'm just uh, Ritalin I'm de- or leashes. Uh, both. I both. feel like yeah. <laughs> Could use both. Bring them back. Well, Dan, you were pitching shark cages. Yeah, uh, dude, I'm any cage for a kid. It's fine for me. I don't care if we have to dunk them in the pool. Or yeah. Not. yeah. There's a picture out there of my girlfriend's kid in my dog's cage, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Zach, what are the other, like, obviously that is one of the big hot button issues in the brewery industry. Is always has like, been, always will be. Is there, like, another, like, major rift that, like, so divisive. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't call it divisive. It's more like interesting to me. Um, I guess it's um, you, you can kind of see it with people getting away from, like, I mean, you, you, we're all craft drinkers, right? I mean, what do you like better, uh, a thick fruited smoothie sour, or do you like a traditional like Berliner Weiss, something like light and effervescence? What do you like better, a traditional stout or something that's you know they throw moon pies in the mash tun? You know what I mean? I mean, is it really beer at a certain point? What are people chasing? Do they want um, something that's beer flavored or do they want alcoholic soda? You know what I mean? Right. Um, personally, like, you know, at this point, I don't really care because I'll make money off of both of them. But like as, as a hobbyist, I can enjoy those kind of things. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, I'm drinking, you know, this thing has got, you know, 50 pounds of fruit puree. And I'm like, this, this isn't beer. Like this is, this is, this is a smoothie. You know what I mean? Or, I don't know, that's something that um, it kind of hurts my soul sometimes when I, when I like them, <laughs> when I so, enjoy them. So <laughs> we, everyone likes novelty. I think we, yeah, everybody likes novelty, but where do you draw the line? How far back do you go? I'll draw the Is it a classic line. style and you can't go beyond that? Well, I mean, un- un- you know, Untapped and the Great American Beer Fest add, like, you know, whatever, 10 styles a year or whatever just to encompass this. I mean, have, has anybody heard of a pastry sour before this year? No. Right. No. I don't think I've heard of a piece or anything. Put ice cream in it. It's delicious. I mean, I'm just questioning if you know. I don't know the, whoever you know whoever invented beer back in the day. I don't, Sam Adams. Let's call it Sam Adams. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll tell you. He, he, he rode beer. his horse into Boston, and you know whatever it was. But um, no, um, what, what do you, th- what, you? You wouldn't think that's beer. Even five, ten years ago, you're like, well, what is this? You know right. what I mean? The German purity law, the Rheinsgebot. Yeah, Ryan Heiskabold. Ryan Heiskabold, thank you. Water, hops, yeast, and malt, that's it. I wouldn't call it a hot button issue. I just think it's an interesting point of conversation that, you know, it's like, how far are we going to stray from... I think the more they stray, the more people go back. Like you say, with just the genuine lagers coming up. You get funky, 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 and then all of a sudden you have a nice lager, and you're like, boy, this is actually really nice. I've been doing. (laughs) I find that that is the issue with porters and stouts now. Like, you're kind of hard pressed to find a good craft stout that's just a stout. Yeah, not no right. adjuncts. You know, not a marshmallow cherry cheesecake. stout with, yeah. Cannoli. Right. You know, and again, I enjoy that stuff. Fine, it's yeah. tasty. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Am I going to drink 100 of them? No. <laughs> exactly. You're not getting yeah. two, yeah. but you'll have one. We even used to talk about the high ABVs for a while. Like, yeah. everyone was like, how much booze can I put in this yep. beer? Yeah, that's dangerous. And it's like now I'm like, I want something like four to five. Do you remember the... Yeah, uh, if, if the lower the ABV, because I want to drink a few. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't want to have one beer and then friggin' maintain. You know, not be able to drive home. Do you remember before the, uh, you know, before New England IPA started being a thing, the total IBU arms race that was happening? Oh, and then yeah. people would take, you know, <laughs> yes. 100, uh, you know, 170 IBU beers. Like, oh, yeah, yep. this, this is good. Yep. Yeah. Make this face like... Which oh. is why for years I was like, I don't like... 
IPAs. And that's then you what have killed that one it. IPA and you can't taste anything else. The that's what set yep. it back so far. That's why um, people that like aren't real like you know like like beer nerds or whatever. They're a couple years behind stylistically, and they're trying to catch up to that now. Yep. So used to be how, assu- many, how many IPUs are there? How many IBUs are there? Mm-hmm. I assume that you know, as far as what's going to be a hot seller, we're going to see a lot more of like you know, fruited sours and pastry stouts and stuff because that's kind of where, it, at least if I remember correctly, that's kind of where things went after you know everybody learned how to brew a good New England's. You know, mm-hmm. eventually you just keep going down the rabbit hole or whatever, funky, funky wild stuff like that. Go to effervescent saisons, and then everybody's back to Miller High Life in three years. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> you know? the, the good old reset. Yeah. Yep, yeah. I love, I love that Miller High Life's everyone's reset. Yeah, that's my reset. That needs to be on. That needs to be kegged more often. I went down south a few months ago to South Carolina, offered pictures of Miller High Life. I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't even remember. I haven't seen a Miller High Life tap handle. In I used to keep 10 it on draft years. at uh, the British Beer Company when I worked there. Oh my that's yeah. Really like yep. So good. I was like, I know yeah. exactly what I'm getting. I know the ABV is not going to be crazy. It's pretty much everywhere. 4.74. I don't have to like read through like a 20 page beer list. I, you know, it's just a easy go to drinkable. I can crush when, And you do that with Guinness car, right? Where you'll just get a Guinness to start and yep. then you go through the if beer menu. If somebody has a really big long list, I'll get a Guinness while I'm reading it because I don't know yep. what to get. I can't make up my mind. Yeah, yep. I can't make up my mind. Really like, give me a Guinness and then I can, you know. <laughs> I, got a, I got a funny story. So, uh, at the. Um, we, uh, we did an no, event. <laughs> we did an event at Galley one time, and it was uh, uh, it was like it was like a brewer's beer dinner or something. So it was like um, us. I think uh, Widowmaker was there. I think Vitamin was there. Um, you know, a couple of the other South Shore guys, and they all brought in you know for the brewers to have on the list. The cool thing they did was they had a, a each brewer's favorite beer on there. And I think two out of five of them uh, were Miller High Life, so they got cast. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that is last call. It's a good story. I'm mm. shitting on your story. No worries. Um, we only shit on Andy's stories. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. to it. Because they're about uh, Home Depot. So this is part of the show where we go around the table and we get to plug whatever we want. And I'm going to put Jordan on the hot seat. Oh, shit. Um, sixes and sevens, which was not mentioned when I was introduced earlier, is my new bar restaurant that is opening in new bedford we're looking to open in january so but we um, don't we don't mention it unless it's already open yeah well i'm gonna get people excited uh finish works wrapping to be fair he might not be back till january so up some photos get the kitchen good (laughs) turn on some equipment and we gotta start hiring um so yeah if you or anyone you know that works in new bedford area has some kitchen or front of the house experience and is looking to work for a not so bad guy uh, oh, re- not running it? Yeah. Reach out to Andy at BogTalkCast uh, at gmail.com and send him your resume and I'll forward it over to me. Thanks. I can, I can do that. Yeah. I'll be your secretary, I guess. Thanks. Appreciate that. Carl, over to you. Listen, keep your kids and dogs at home when you come to the brewery. <laughs> or on leashes and gates. a bar <laughs> or a restaurant that don't like your kids and dogs. That's what I'm pushing. Okay. Mahoney. Um, so I'm going to start a new business, right? Yes. Where it's dog kid pens for bars and restaurants where it's like those rest stops where they have a giant fenced in area you just put the dogs and kids in there and you'd be like Thunderdome exactly <laughs> it's like <laughs> the ball pit Krusty land. yeah uh, no it's itchy and scratchy land on the Simpsons they just drop Maggie in like the ball pit that's it yeah that's kids. it <laughs> we'll make it a little muddy so all the kids and the dogs have fun and just fucking call it a day throw some balls and fucking balls toys in there shit. yeah <laughs> you don't know if it's poop or mud or what and uh <laughs> Also on topic is fuck daylight savings. So, yes, thank my you. annual rant against daylight savings being the dumbest thing in the world. Somehow, this is the last that. one, right? I, well, if it I stopped, thought I thought, thought it was done. Yeah. If it stopped, does it stop? Like, which one was the first one? The March or the November? I don't know. So which Keep one? Even the way it was, where I, you know, not the way it is. The way it is right now, where it gets dark at four o'clock, I'm all set. Dude. I'll take dark at five. Yeah, so what? Whatever the next so one is, that's the I last one, right? And a half you know, you said it? Yeah. <laughs> this is the last one. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. Please, so the please, other one sucks more. Daylight forever, you know. Hey, let him, let him plug his buddy. We wants. were talking about my last call, Carl. All right. I know you're not used to discussions here. You just like to yell over each other. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got a billion things. I don't know why up, you have to say just, that. I don't talk over anybody. <laughs> let's just keep it simple. I got a few a few events here with Andy coming up. We got our uh, comedy night next week. Uh, Jay Whitaker is going to be headlining. Uh, the week after that, I believe we have a mug painting night coming up, uh, and then in December, big one coming up, we have Nibirat doing our local vendor holiday market on December 18th. Come out for that, should be a really fun day. That's very professional. Yeah. Thank you for shouting out Nibirat, that's awesome. 
Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to a listener, Jack, uh, over in London. I got a chance to speak to him. Big fan of the show. So thank you, Jack, for listening and everyone else around the globe for listening. Jack, we're coming to you for our next uh, off location podcast. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah. yeah. And, we're gonna... like that and nobody's way. a big fan of the show. Well, they could be large, like t- really oh, tall. Like he's big? Yeah, right. like. Uh, oh, he's you're calling them big. I, I said tall, no. yeah. I said big as in, like, listen to all the episodes. I wasn't shitting on the listener. <laughs> yeah, that's Jordan's job. Yeah. Exactly. I don't do that. <laughs> yes. They're a mixologist. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you can reach us at bartalkcast at gmail.com with all your questions, complaints, hate mail, whatever you got. Uh, you can find us on all the social medias at bartalkcast, and we'll catch you again next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. And thanks for checking out the show today, listeners. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, you can go over to patreon.com slash inebriart to support the show. You can join over there for just a few dollars a month and help us provide this fun content that you just checked out. You can also email us at inebriart.com with your questions, complaints, and concerns, or you can find us on all social medias at inebriart or at inebriart6 on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out our other shows, Bar Talk Podcast, Old Colony Cast, Inebriart, and all the other shows on the Inebriart Network, which you can find at inebriart.com. Thanks again for listening.